Library and the Mary Catherine Lincoln Center, and we are also the liaisons to the art history department here. Um, and I, along with the health sciences librarian and health sciences librarian intern, Karen and David, um, we brought this National Library of Medicine exhibit that goes around to different schools, and we get it for a few months, and we were able to get for the summer, so we were excited. So feel free afterwards, I don't want to like go into talk for about 20 minutes, um, to come up look more closely. These we've got a couple of the articles up here, some of the books that we have. Um, there's also another event on July 17th, which will have a health sciences panel um, talking about some of the, um, a little bit more of the medical side of this than, than I am personally talking about as a person with a music background. Um, and so that should be really cool as well. So anyway, like I said, my name is Maria, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the votive art form. Uh, so what are ex votos? I didn't really know a lot about this when we decided to get this exhibit. Um, so literally means in accordance with a vow. Um, it's an offering dedicated to a saint, a divinity, sometimes multiple ones, as the fulfillment of a promise. Um, when an individual's prayers are answered, a lot of times it's a medical issue or something like that. Um, they are they are created in thanks for uh, and devotion for the miracle that has just occurred. Um, I, I thought it was interesting that the Bloomsbury Guide to Art said the term is now synonymous with an object, token, painting, or plaque bearing a message of devotion and humility. These objects are placed in a church or chapel at the appropriate altar where the worshiper seeks patronage to ask for special grace or to give thanks for a prayer which has been granted. So nowadays, um, there's sometimes done in advance and saying, I'm praying for this, I'm, I'm doing extra devotion, uh, you know, I'm having this very serious surgery coming up. There's, there's a little bit more of a broad term um, associated with it now. Um, the earliest forms of votive art were actually in the 6th and 7th century. There were uh, Greco-Roman precedents, uh, plaques uh, displaying the intercessing of a saint, um, usually because of like an injured body part or something like that that was healed or taken care of. So some of the characteristics of ex votos, um, any kind of subject matter uh, could be represented here. Car accidents, uh, natural disasters, there's one that's a, an animal attack on a person, injuries, um, surgeries, robberies, if someone gets mugged. Um, and there's three parts to an ex votos painting. There's the visual narrative where either the person's you know, on the surgery bed and there's doctors around and everything, or it's what happened to them, uh, like the bulls charging at their stomach, whatever, there's one of those. Um, and then the deity is usually in this ethereal cloud in the corner and uh, you know, in full saintly regalia, halos, all kinds of stuff. Basically, whatever I think is the personal depiction of, of the person who is suffering. And then on the bottom, there's a textual narration. This is what happened to me, and this is the time when uh, you know, I was healed, and I thank whoever is in the ethereal cloud up above. Um, and one thing is the narratives, they don't really have any regard for passage of time, because it will be like, I. My leg got ran over by a cart, and then I had the surgery, which could have been who knows how long later, and I recovered just fine. There could be a span of six months, but it's basically condensed into four sentences at the bottom of the next photo. Um, these are amateur art, which I think is what makes them so interesting, um, that they've kind of stood the test of time, and people now want to collect these sort of things. Um, I read a really funny story in one of the articles that started with um, uh, David Sequeiros, I think I'm saying that right, Perry, you can like correct my Spanish if you want. Um, he was a popular muralist in, in the Mexican Revolution, and he came across a, like a pyramid, just a pile of these, um, and he, he called them a true mountain of small paintings tossed carelessly on the floor, made of paper, painted with colored pencils, but especially interesting perhaps more primitive than the others, almost as if executed by a child. And they were basically a giant pile of old ex votos paintings. And he took a couple because he thought they were trash. And that's why they were piled up. And then the priest yelled at him, called him a thief, and had to like tackle him out of the church or something like that. So just a, a 
goes to show you that some of them were really done by the people themselves, or they would be commissioned by local artists who were just, you know, maybe just the artist of this small community. Um, they're broad brush strokes, really bright colors, um, no regard to perspective, so, you know, what's happening might be kind of tiny in the corner, and then um, the deity's like huge. Um, there's misspellings in the texts. They didn't really take the time to correct their errors because this wasn't for that purpose. It was for a devotional purpose, so it really didn't matter to them. Um, they're often made on canvas or tin with oil paint. It's a lot of the examples that you'll see. And a lot of times they're put up at their local church, and sometimes they're passed to other people. There's not really a lot of documentation about that um, until uh, like professional artists started collecting them. Um, there's a couple things that are similar to ex votos that you may have heard of, retablos. Um, were also popular in Mexico and Peru. Um, sometimes you'll see articles or studies that talk about these things interchangeably. They're not really exactly the same. The main difference is this Mexico and Peru are using these things in churches. So they're also done by amateur artists, but they're, they're static. They're not about a, a narrative event necessarily. They might just be like, I you know, want this to happen and I'm going to paint this great picture of a deity and put it behind the altar. So a little bit different. Um, the deity is more in action. The actual intercession is happening in ex photos. And there's also a Greek version. Uh, it's found on some Christian objects, also a devotion uh, in the Mediterranean regions. And here's a couple of samples that are blown up a little bit bigger. A couple of these are on here. Um, a lot of them are not so please feel free to take a look. Um, there's some from Sicily. Um, this was also popular in Italy, and there's a, a lot from Mexico. Um, the interesting thing about these is that you can't really exactly tell what year they were written, uh, or um, painted, I guess I should say, although there is text. But uh, So I thought it would be interesting to see um, the quality difference between some that were maybe in the past century as opposed to like, you know, 1700s and things like that. Even the difference between something uh, around 1910 uh, as opposed to like 1970s, they, they pretty much look exactly the same, which is pretty cool. So this one's from Sicily. Um, this person was suffering from tuberculosis. So you can see here we've got our little cloud of deities, devotion happening. He's, you know, got some serious stuff going on here. Um, this is from 1927. Really nice colors. It's in really good condition. So here's one from Mexico. This is a child had a leg injury and the mother is praying to the deity over on the side there. And that one, was, I think the perspective is kind of what I was talking about there. Like the child's there, just kind of in the bed, and the deity's very prominent. Um, so I, I think that this one looks pretty similar in condition and, and the use of colors and everything, and this is from 1977. So kind of the same idea really going on here. Here's another one from Mexico. Um, this person got attacked in the street, um, and this one kind of has a little, little split in color. I think that was an interesting artistic idea. That's from 1935. And here's another one. This is a, an animal attack, kind of like one of the same, got hit like right in the stomach. And that's 1911. So this one's 1911, and this one, which is a surgery, is 1914. So there's really no advancement of techniques, materials, anything like that. So it's really interesting how that kind of stood the test of time. This is a, I just thought this was cool that these are now kind of being used as actual displays. Um, this is a ex photo display in New Mexico. You can see the wall is just covered with all of these and um, people are just kind of going through and looking at them. Um, some artists influenced by ex votos, um, notably Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Um, 
So Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera were part of the Mexican Revolution, and um, Frida Kahlo, interestingly, painted a lot of self-portraits. She got in a really bad uh, automobile, or I think she was on a bus or something, accident when she was younger, and after she recovered from that, in like 1925, she had health problems for the rest of her life. Um, so she painted a lot of self-portraits because uh, I was reading she, she just identified a lot with that, especially after having a lot of problems. And um, she really liked folk art, um, and, and it's sometimes also called naive art. Um, and she really liked the, the bright colors and um, like the primitive style of everything. So here's one of her pictures. Um, as you can see, really bright colors. Um, a couple of her self-portraits have um, kind of the primitiveness of the lack of um, perspective where she'll, she'll be really front and center but then everything around her is also really big so it's kind of this like, weird, weird thing. Um, uh, Diego Rivera, he was part of the muralist movement at this time also and he thought this was so important for folk art that he actually wrote in a couple you know like art magazines just about the importance of being influenced by this type of art. Um, another person, Jose Guadalupe Posada, he was a printmaker and an engraver, and he did a lot of representations of religious figures, and he looked to uh, Exvotos for a lot of those deity, you know, how, how did the people that were really, de you know, devoting themselves to these spiritual um, icons, like, how were they portraying them? Because that's where you're going to get um, current artists, uh, Nicaro Jimenez Cuspe, maybe I pronounced that right, kind of. Um, he is doing this today. He's Peruvian born. He lives in Naples, Florida uh, now. And some of his stuff, uh, he like builds these little models, but on the sides, he, he either has like ex voto um, sort of panels or really bright colors, and he is influenced a lot by that. Um, a couple studies regarding ex votos, getting to a little bit more of the uh, scholarly side of this. Um, this specific one, which is actually right there, um, this was an article about the breast cancer between faith and medicine um, with this ex voto. And this photo doesn't really follow the norm. Um, as you can see, there's not a cloud of material being here, it's actually just a domestic dresser with, you know, who she was praying to on it. So it was a little bit more, um, you know, focused on the individual and their suffering. Um, one interesting thing was that um, her posture on the bed and like the length of the incision that's happening right there really reflected the uh, medical advancements in the time of surgery. Um, there's an account um, by a doctor in this uh, same same realm of time, and he talks about, well, there's been enough advancements that now we can have these people helping, you can have the surgery in the home, and the person is, you know, on an incline in their bed, and we make an incision from, you know, the bottom of the chest to the navel. And so it kind of reflects, these things can reflect what types of medical advancements have been made at the time. So that was a really interesting read there. Um, this one, uh, the ex voto image organ time, I think we have copies of that up here um, if you would like to look. It's a little bit more from the Middle Ages perspective. Um, they used wax sometimes as a medium for an ex voto. And um, this article kind of talks about, it, it, you know, the transformable properties of wax and how if, you know, you, you had your leg ran over by a cart, you could make a wax figure of you know your leg and then reshape it when it's healed and they would bring those to churches and things and, and that's a very interesting definitely a different form doesn't have too much to do with the Mexican tradition but I think it's a, a really interesting interesting study there we do have a web page that Aaron and I worked on I'll give Aaron most of the credit she did some like awesome stuff on it and we're hopefully gonna post this video and all kinds of stuff. 
Um, and if you do want to come back to visit for anything else, then all the information is on there about you know, getting here. Well, I guess we know where it is now. But, you know. Um, so that is um, on there for you as well. And if you want any of the articles that I looked at for this, um, feel free to email me. That's my email here. And uh, I think there's more food, so you can eat some more sweets and get all like sugared up before you leave. Um, and feel free to take a look at this and hope you learn a little bit more about the Expo Exhibition. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll answer them as best I can. Um, you were saying Expo Show and Expo Talk. Yeah, it's technically an ex photo is one. One. Yeah. Or you could say an ex photo is like a, a dedication to the same. So ex photos, I guess I'm saying like um, multiple actual physical pictures. Um, I lived in Washington, D.C. for a long time. Yeah. And um, as the Hispanic population migrated, probably several different migrations. They would bring um, devotions and representations of saints or representations of God the Father or Jesus that I had never seen before. Yeah. And want them to go into a lot of their would be Anglo Saxon parishes. And they were quite interesting, quite interesting. But one day at this one church um, there was a Whoever this was saved us from plague back in our country, and here she saves us from fire. And more than that, they painted the church, and it needed it. They cleaned the church. <laughs> they cleaned there you the go. carpet, and he wants us to take the candles. Yeah. <laughs> like this is this was helpful. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say, um, when Never you were saying that, that that people come and bring candles and things. I, I did read that. The ones that are left at churches, and this happens with the retablos too, people specifically go to those kind of churches on pilgrimages yes. to, to check those those out. People do these there. Yeah. I have a question. So these would be considered visionary art in a way. Yeah. Are these yeah. in a visionary museum? I, I you know what? It. I don't know. For some reason, that is ringing a bell. Like it may have been in that uh, image organ time. Like mentioned, I feel like something from Baltimore. So there, there might be something there. I didn't look into that, but that would be really interesting. extreme amount of money but they did really go up in price once people like Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera deemed that they were interesting and important to art so I know after that they definitely started being collectible haven't seen any for a while I wonder if that one would go for a decent amount because it has studies done with it and things like that I don't know it's interesting to find out big auction these ex, ex voto auction how old is this tradition? I got the impression that a lot of these were much older than, than they seem to be. Yeah, um, it's a really old tradition as far as um, just ex voto in general. It's it's uh, devotional paintings could go back to about the sixth, seventh century. But the Mexican tradition was really popular in like the late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because people people really do make them today, and I, I found a lot from like the fifties uh, mm -hmm. and sixties. The one down there in the corner, the, the man on the uh, yeah. operating table, that one is from the year 2000. Yeah, yeah. So, there are so many new. So, yeah, they, 
I think that's one of the interesting things about them being amateur art is they they kind of stand the test of time. You don't actually know when, when did these start because they all kind of look the same. Your website that the, the art is actually housed at the library. Is that incorrect? Is that? Um, I don't know. I don't think I so. I don't think so. Um, the National Library of Medicine uh, got the rights to um, to display these paintings, but most of them are held by private collectors. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and some may still be up in churches. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. They just. 